My name is Frasad. I was born and raised in New York City, and at the age of 21, I went to an Islamic seminary where I spent nearly a decade of my life studying to become an imam. As a child, I heard so many stories about Jesus Christ. Christianity and Islam, the two largest religions in the world, differ the most on this one central figure. Muslims believe that Jesus is a revered prophet of God. Christians believe that Jesus was the literal Son of God, God in the flesh. I needed to know the truth about who Jesus really was. YouTube, that's where my journey began. A video popped up in my recommendations, Jesus the Son of God. But God the Father has felt this pain. He lost a loved one, if you will, when he watched humanity murder his son. From there, more and more videos focusing on Jesus and the Trinity showed up in my recommended list. I began watching clips with upwards of millions of views. And through all this, I questioned, what did Jesus preach? Did Jesus himself claim divinity? Did Jesus claim that he was the literal Son of God? Is the only means of salvation through Jesus? With YouTube muddling through my thoughts, I decided to turn to the actual source, the Holy Bible. I promised myself that no matter what I found, I would wholeheartedly accept it. If that meant changing the core fundamentals of my life, including my religion, then I would not hesitate to do so, as long as I found the truth. As it says in the Gospel of John, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. 1. That's all I was looking for. One unequivocal statement proving Jesus was God. And what I found shook me to my core. It changed my beliefs completely. It took me away from the mainstream Muslim narrative, and it made me see that there was truth in the Holy Bible. Everyone needs to read the Holy Bible and study it thoroughly. What I found on my quest for the truth was not just one unequivocal statement, but multiple statements where Jesus clearly explained who he was and what his purpose was. How could anyone miss this if they claimed to read the Holy Bible? In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or abolish the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For I tell you truly, until heaven and earth pass away, not a single jot, not a stroke of a pen will disappear from the law. Jesus says, not a single jot, not a stroke of a pen will disappear from the law. But what law was he referring to? I found my answer in the Gospel of Luke. One day, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, what is written in the law? What is written in Moses' teachings? What do you read there? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Jesus told him, do this and you will live. What's profound about these verses is, first, these are Moses' commandments and laws. And second, the expert asked Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus responded, what is written in the law? This perplexed me. If Jesus was indeed God, why wouldn't he mention anything about salvation through him? Unquestionably, Jesus was focusing on the Mosaic law. It was in these passages that God clearly stated his oneness, his unity. In Deuteronomy, he is God. There is no other God beside him. 
Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. I am He, and there is no God beside me. A recurring theme throughout the Old Testament. In the second book of Samuel, For this reason you are great, O Lord God, for there is none like you, and there is no God besides you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. In the book of Isaiah, I am the first, and I am the last, and there is no God besides me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. If this were the case, and the God of the Old Testament was indeed one, and one alone, did Jesus himself agree to God's oneness? I found my answer in the Gospel of Mark. Jesus stated, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. How could this be, when in all of those various YouTube videos that I watched, it was reiterated over and over again that Jesus was the literal Son of God? I went back to Jesus' original message from the Sermon on the Mount. Not a single jot, not a stroke of a pen will disappear from the law. But what does the law state about God's physical form? In the book of Numbers, God himself says God is not a man. In the book of Hosea, God again says, For I am God and not man. So, did Jesus himself believe that he was the literal Son of God? In the Gospel of John, we read that Jews picked up stones to throw at Jesus, who they claimed committed blasphemy. And Jesus answered them with this, Many good works I have shown you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? They said, We're not stoning you for any good work, but for blasphemy, because you who are a man declare yourself to be God. Jesus replied, is it not written in your own law? I have said you are gods. As I read the Bible, I saw more and more that the title, Son of God, was a recurring theme throughout the Old Testament. In Deuteronomy, you are the children of the Lord your God. In the book of Psalms, I have said you are gods, you are all sons of the Most High. In the book of Exodus, God refers to the entire nation of Israel as Israel is my firstborn son. Even in the New Testament, the righteous believers are considered as such. In Romans, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I read over a dozen instances throughout the Old and New Testaments where individuals were given the title Son of God. What's even more profound and astonishing is that Jesus himself denied the claim to being the literal Son of God. In the Gospel of Luke, And the devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, You are Christ, the Son of God. And he, rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. Even those around Jesus believed that he was only a man, a humble prophet of God. In the book of Acts, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man, approved of God among you. In the Gospel of Matthew. And the crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. In the Gospel of Luke, Fear gripped all of them, and they began glorifying God, saying, A great prophet has arisen amongst us. There are many more passages where Jesus is referred to as a man, a prophet of God. So it begs the question, why did people take Jesus to be God? I was on my way to the mosque. It was time for prayer. When I started my car, the radio turned on to the station that I had been listening to last. Ehrman is the author of several popular books about early Christianity, including Misquoting Jesus, and Jesus Interrupted. He's a distinguished professor of religious studies at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Did Jesus' earliest followers consider him to be God? Well, what I argue in the book is that during his lifetime, 
Jesus himself didn't call himself God and didn't consider himself God, and that none of his disciples had any inkling at all that he was God. Uh, the way it works is that you, you do find Jesus calling himself God in the Gospel of John, our last Gospel. Jesus says things like, uh, before Abraham was, I am, and I and the Father are one, and if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. These are all statements that you find only in the Gospel of John, and that's striking because we have earlier Gospels, and we have the writings of Paul, and in none of them is there any indication that Jesus said such things about him. I think it's completely implausible that Matthew, Mark, and Luke would not mention that Jesus called himself God if that's what he was declaring about himself. Th that would be a rather important point to make. So uh, this is not an unusual view among scholars. It's, it's simply the view that, that the Gospel of John is providing a theological understanding of Jesus that is not what was historically accurate. Just like that, it fit together like a puzzle. As Jesus said in Matthew, not a single jot, not a stroke of a pen will disappear from the law. I found that even atonement, the core doctrine of Christianity, was at complete odds with what was stated in Mosaic law. In Deuteronomy, the father shall not be put to death for the children, neither the children put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sins. Trinity atonement, and the deity of Christ were all at odds with the Old and at times even the New Testament. These beliefs had to have been made after Jesus' supposed ascension to heaven, since historians themselves say that the Bible was compiled decades after this event. So what happened to Jesus if he was only a man, if he was only a prophet of God? The mainstream Islamic narrative has too many holes. I can't accept the substitution theory. The crucifixion did take place, and it was indeed Jesus who was put on the cross. Even his own mother, Mary, peace be upon her, saw him. This would lead me to the next part of my journey, the crucifixion. <laughs>